I've worked in human resources for close to 15 years now, and I've worked in many different industries and companies. But one thing that remains constant is that a lot of employees dread their end of year performance review. And I think that this comes down to three reasons. One is that employees don't prepare for their end of year performance review. Another one is they don't know what to talk about. And the final one is that they don't spend enough time thinking about and tracking their goals throughout the year. By the end of this video, you will have a method and a system to tackle all three of those issues. So let's discuss preparation first. As soon as your manager books a end of year review with you, you should block out some time to prepare for it. This sounds really basic, but you'll be surprised how many employees don't spend time preparing for their end of year review. People spend a lot of time preparing for job interviews, but the time that they spend preparing for an end of year review often pales in comparison. If you are preparing for a job interview, I've also put together a video on how to prepare for a job interview. I'll include a link in the description and I'll also have it come up on the screen here or here, I always forget where it comes up. So let's move on back to preparation. I think that some employees think that their managers keep track of their accomplishments and outcomes and achievements, but it's really up to employees to keep track of it. So your manager is just as time poor as you. So the onus is really on you to keep track of what you've achieved throughout the year. The amount of preparation time that you will have to devote, it really depends on how diligent you've been throughout the year and keeping track of your goals and, and what you've been working on. There's no hard or fast rule on how much time you should spend preparing but I think if you've been booked uh, in for an hour performance review you should sp probably spend a couple of hours thinking about what you want to discuss. You don't have to do that all in one go you could break it up over the course of a few days or even a few weeks. So now I'll show you what you should discuss during your performance review. So I think that humility and gratefulness are really underrated qualities and especially so when it comes to performance reviews. It's important to strike a healthy balance between showcasing what you've achieved throughout the year while also acknowledging those who have helped you along the way. I think it's also a great time to express uh, gratitude towards your manager or your company for any opportunities that have been provided to you. If you have a formal scorecard or a formal goal plan, you should really spend a lot of time discussing how you have met or exceeded any of the goals and targets that you were assigned. If you haven't been successful in achieving some of your goals, this shouldn't be the first time that you're discussing it, but you should give your manager a reminder of why you weren't successful. If you work in a less structured environment and you don't have a formal scorecard or goal plan system, there's another way to tackle this. I would recommend that you have a discussion around the highlights for your year, anything that you would approach differently and discuss any development areas and things that you're wanting to work on in the future. A key part of the discussion and something to keep front of mind when you're preparing for your end of year review is how you have added value to your organization. The demonstration of value is especially important if you're wanting to discuss a promotion or a salary increase. You should really discuss and summarize all of the contributions that you've made to the organization and how you've added value and ask for your salary to be reviewed. You could say, I believe that I've added a lot of value to the organization this year. These are the different things that I've achieved and I'd really appreciate it if my salary could be reviewed and just see where the discussion goes from there. All right, let's discuss how to track your progress. I'm going to be showing you how to do this in a system called Notion. You could do this in Word or Excel, but I think uh, Notion provides a lot of advantages over those programs, which I will show you as we go into detail. I've been using Notion extensively for close to a year now. I use it every day and it's really essential to how I get things done and how I manage my, my life. Notion can have a bit of a learning curve. It is a little bit difficult to get your head around at first. I've put together a few videos which uh, you might find useful. One of the great things about Notion is that you can uh, make a template and then share it with other people. And so in a lot of my videos, I will include a link in the description to the template that I'm showing, which I will be doing for this video, obviously. So you can duplicate uh, my template to your Notion workspace and that'll be a great way to get things started and, and to get the hang of it. I put together a video called New to Notion, the three essential databases. It comes with a, a starter pack of three different databases that you can duplicate to your Notion and use to get started. So let's have a look at this. This is the performance review preparation database that I've put together. As I mentioned, there'll be a link in the description uh, down below where you can download this and duplicate it to your Notion. So this is what I would be recommending to use to keep track of your goals throughout the year and make sure that you're ready when it's time for your end of year performance review. So let's have a look at the first one here, cardboard algorithm efficiency. Uh, obviously these are some fictitious goals that I've put together. They're a bit lame, but uh, I've just tried to 
make these uh, from a business perspective so you can understand how you would use them in your role. The goal description in this one is design and introduce an algorithm to the manufacturing system which reduces cardboard waste by 27% needs to be completed by start of Q3. So there's a date in there. So I've included a field where you can include what date the project is due. I've also included a section in here, which is a property called aligns to company value. If you're working for an organization that has uh, different values, you could include them in here. And then when you're assigning yourself a goal, you can record what value it aligns to. So I've just put some example values in there. Those are actually the values that I would uh, use if I was ever uh, creating a company. Uh, so there you go, uh, you can see those now. Uh, so uh, you can change those around and, and make them whatever you would like. So I've also put in here another property called goal type where you can record what uh, category you think that the goal aligns to. In this example, it's efficiency and problem solving. So over time, if you're building up a bit of a, a database of different goals, you can come back to it later. So one of the great things about Notion is that you're able to create linkages between different databases. And you'll see here these two uh, properties they have an arrow pointing upwards, which if you've used Notion before, you'll know that is a relational database, which means that these pages are pulling from a different part of Notion. So when you create a goal in an organization, you're often assigned a goal, and then from that goal will come different projects, and the projects will have different tasks assigned to them. So throughout the year, you're working on different projects to try and meet that overarching goal. So in this example here, the goal is cardboard algorithm efficiency and I've created a project in there called Algorithm Course because I'm trying to demonstrate that if you were assigned this goal, you would maybe want to take a course on an algorithm to increase your knowledge. So if I open this one up here in another page, so this is now pulling from that project database where you can see the project that I've put together, what is the type, the status, project idea and brief, project scope, what does success look like? Then at the bottom here, I have a task manager, which there's another relational database here, which is my master task database. And I've filtered it so that any of the tasks are those related to that algorithm course. So you can see how Notion is enabling me to track everything in the one place. So if I go back to performance goal, you can see here in this project, I have performance goal cardboard algorithm linked to this so I can jump back and forth. So if I open this and go back to that now in here, I've included a section where you could record the overall assessment, how you feel that you performed against that goal, any reflections on projects that you were working on, and then any ways in which you feel that you demonstrated the company values. So this is a way that you could use Notion to keep track of the different projects that you were doing related to your goal. So if I come back here to performance review preparation, you can see there are three goals in here and each of them have assigned projects to them and assigned tasks. This is another example. So I'll open this one up just so you can really get the hang of it. This is supplier quality improvement without cost increase. Again, I've got the value that it aligns to a due date, goal description, what type of goal it is, and then again, a project. So in this example, this example goal, uh, the goal description was work with Acme Parts Production to improve the quality of the widget part XYZ. I'm not sure, like when I write this stuff later, I look at it and I think, what were you thinking? Uh, but so improve the quality of the widget part XYZ by changing the design, increase aerodynamic properties without price increase, Market research shows this will increase consumer satisfaction by 18%. So I've, I've gone into, I've gone a bit over the top with the description there, but I'm trying to help you understand how you would use this for one of your own goals. So this is a, a, a goal to increase supplier quality. And as part of that, in this fictitious example, you're working with a supplier, so you would have a project where you work with them. So if I open in here, Acme Parts Production Supplier Workshop, again, same template, project idea in brief, what is the scope, what does success look like? So you can be intentional about how you would tackle that project. And then again, you have the task manager, which I've included a filter so it will only bring up any tasks that are related to this project. So it can be a little bit confusing to get your head around the relations and how things work. 
I am going through this quite quickly so that you can get an idea of how to use it. In that video that I mentioned earlier, I've gone through this in detail so you can see how to build connections and you can duplicate it to your Notion workspace. But basically what I would be recommending as a way to track and, and keep track of your goals and your progress is to use Notion, man, use it to manage your projects and your tasks and align them to your goals so that at the end of the year, you can open up your goals and see all the different projects that you worked on, how they align to the company values and what tasks you were doing. It's all there in one place, all there in one spot so you can reference it and pull it up for your performance review. So a few months ago, I read a great book called The Coaching Habit by Michael Bunjay Stanier. And in this book, he discusses a section around how people learn. So the author described that people only truly learn once they have had an opportunity to recall and reflect what has just happened. So in order to give you that opportunity and to really help you with learning what I've just shown you, think about what was most useful for you about this video. If you have enjoyed this video, I encourage you to have a look at my Notion playlist, which I'll include at the end of this video. I've been putting together a few videos. One of them is doing uh, pretty well uh, for me at least. It has close to 14,000 views, which I never thought I would make anything that would have uh, anything close to that. So I, I'm just really happy that people are getting value from it and that it is uh, helping other people. So have a look at that one. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch my video and I will see you in the next one.